Hi guys, it is a frosty 24 degree morning here in the lovely town of Hereford, Texas. Hereford, Texas. Uh, here on, it's actually now early in the morning on Thursday, November 20th, 2014. Uh, so I'm just a day late on my my normal Wednesday morning climate change meltdown roundup while my buddy's taking a shower. I'm going to knock out a a quick climate change meltdown while I go on the pages of the mainstream media to find how while I've been packing up from snowy Paonia how the rest of this planet is descending into a burning lake of fire and good god I got like 12 stories to touch on today there are no shortage of climate change stories on the mainstream media I love this one my number one pick how the, the advertisement on a climate change story is a car ad, a gas-sucking car ad. Okay, AP, what is our, what are our friends at the UN up to this week? Recent carbon pollution pledges are not enough to avoid dangerous warming, new UN report says. No shit, Sherlock. The world still is not close to prevent to preventing what leaders call a dangerous level of man-made warming a new United Nations report says that's despite some nations recent pledges to cut back on carbon dioxide emissions uh, yeah, and they're talking that what this is, is and one more article about this absolutely unadulterated horseshit. Two degree, two degree Celsius uh, global mean temperature rise. Okay, this is UN's Under Secretary for Environment, Akim Steiner. Quote: The time window for reaching that goal is closing closing and the cost of getting to that goal is increasing increasing yes it is I love this quote down here let's see this is climatologist Granger Morgan from Carnegie Mellon University uh, this is his opinion of that two degree uh, goal <clears throat> Let's see. Today, a two degree target is akin to a 60 year old man who resolves to be 25 years old next year. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah, and this all 55 year old doomsday prophet knows what that means. Now, one of the things they talk about here, they talking about some of the countries who are doing a good job meeting their goals. By the way, uh, the U.S. and China were not listed on the countries doing good jobs, but Brazil was given its gold star by the U.N. And so right, well not right next, but a couple of stories down from the U.N. giving Brazil, it's little gold star. We see this story from AP. <clears throat> Environmentalists say Brazil's greenhouse gases rise, huh? <clears throat> Emissions of greenhouse gases in Brazil, Latin America's biggest country, were almost 8% higher in 2013 than one year earlier. There, there you go. That sounds like a real gold star. And let's try to figure out the reason for that. There's about 10 million reasons as the number of gas sucking cars on Brazilian roads skyrockets in tandem with the rate of deforestation in Brazil ramping up last year. So much for Brazil and the developing world and right next to that story, an offshoot 
observation tower in Amazon to monitor climate change. You gotta love this. Brazil builds an observation tower in the middle of the Amazon. The tallest of its kind in the world to monitor climate change. Well, uh, that, that's a good a place as any to, uh, to build a climate change monitoring station. The Amazon jungle, one of the biggest victims on the planet of climate change as Brazil's greenhouse gases ramp up 8% in the UN giving them their gold star. All sorts of stories coming out of California this week here in the mainstream media. Let's just take a romp. Let's start in the very southern end of California where we see this story from AP. Dry San Diego to look to sewers as new water source. Hmm. Acknowledging California's parched new reality, the city of San Diego has embraced a once toxic idea, turning sewer water into drinking water. There you go. This is a two and a half billion dollar plan to recycle wastewater. The latest example of how California cities are looking for new supplies of water amid its severe drought. 85 percent, 85 percent of San Diego's water serving 1.4 million people comes from the Colorado River and Northern California. There you go. Let's see, what else is going on in uh, California? Here's California's drought is forcing bears, bobcats, and coyotes into suburban backyards. So when you get attacked by a bear as you're climbing into your gas-sucking SUV, you can uh, thank the California drought. Okay, I know I had some more here. Oh, let's see what's going up there, going on up there in uh, Berkeley, California. All right, you know that Save the Planet, town of Berkeley, California. What are those lefty progressives in Berkeley up to? How to save the planet? How about this? Berkeley OK's plan for gas pump climate change labels. Hmm. Some of the country's first gas pump warning labels about climate change are coming to Berkeley a city with a long history of green and clean policies. The Berkeley City Council voted Tuesday to draft a proposal that will put stickers on gas pumps citywide to warn consumers that burning fossil uh, fuels contributes to global warming. And San Francisco is drafting a similar ordinance uh, coming up. Yes, yeah, supporters of Berkeley's measure hope that simply putting labels in front of consumers will motivate them to drive less. Anybody who believes for one minute, if you're some little goddamn lefty, from Berkeley, California, thinking that putting a label on a gas pump is going to uh, get people to drive less. I got something to tell you. Uh, there is one label that you can put on a gas pump in Berkeley, California, or any other gas pump on the planet to get people to drive less and that would be a $20 
per gallon, $20 per gallon price tag on the gas pump. And I guarantee, goddamn to you, that would get people to drive less and do more to cut greenhouse gas emissions on this planet than any other label you could come up with. Let's see. Uh, what's going on in the upper Mississippi? Uh, this is why uh, we use the term climate change instead of global warming, as I, I'm quite sure that Alex Jones is gloating again, uh, that moron, that this headline here proves how full of shit climatologists are. From Reuters News, ICE to close Upper Mississippi from November 20th, earliest on record. The shipping season on the Upper Mississippi River will end on Thursday as ICE surrounding locks and dams near Minnesota's Twin Cities forced the earliest winter closure on records that date back to 1969, the uh, good old U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said. There is so much ice throughout the whole system. Some one of these Army guys, they're getting the barges they can out now and not risking getting stuck there all winter. There you go. So ice shutting down the shipping channels. Let's see. Uh, let's stay here in the U.S. Reuters News asking the question, could Barack Obama cut a deal on the Keystone Pipeline. Don't rule it out. Huh. President Barack Obama might be open to using the Keystone Pipeline as leverage with Republicans if they cooperate on other aspects of his long-stalled domestic agenda. Yeah, so uh, after years of fighting over TransCanada's crude oil pipeline, a Keystone deal is not entirely out of the question. And uh, I guess the Senate, you know, was, was trying to out Obama Obama by approving uh, Keystone without uh, Obama's vote. I guess that failed by one vote. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, there you go. The, 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 uh, the last paragraph of this, and I'm not bringing out the bullshit button because I believe this. Uh, I, I, I agree with this statement in the last paragraph of this story from the mainstream media. A new State Department review found that blocking Keystone would not stop Canada from developing its oil sands. Yep, Canada and the oil industry took that report as a sign that Barack Obama would ultimately approve the pipeline. And, and, and anybody and once again, guys, anybody who believes for one minute that uh, blocking the Keystone Pipeline, and make no mistake about this, I am totally opposed to the Keystone Pipeline, but anybody who believes for one second that, that Barack Obama blocking the Keystone Pipeline would make one iota of difference to the rape and pillage going up there in the Alberta tar sands. I got something to tell you. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Okay. Let's see. So, what did this, these midterm elections have to, uh, say about U.S. voters 
opinions on climate change uh, as a, as a campaign issue. Well, uh, climate change resonates with voters more on a local than a national level. I, uh, I, I bet it does. I like this quote from some billionaire. This is from one of these goddamn billionaire philanthropists. Don't you love that term? Billionaire philanthropist. This guy, somebody, Steyer. Quote, if you talk in generalities, if you talk from the point of view of the globe and the point of view of science, you are in a lot of of trouble. Yes, you are. That is, if, you t if you're talking to American voters about climate change from a global or a scientific perspective, you are in a lot of trouble. Okay, I got to jump into my first shower in five days, so I got three more to touch on here. Let's go up there to the Arctic and our romp around this collapsing planet from the French news service. Polar bear numbers down 40% in parts of Arctic. All right. Polar bears in the Arctic suffered sharp declines in the first decade of this century, losing about 40% percent of their population according to US and Canadian scientists. This will come as a big surprise to Alex Jones claiming that polar bear numbers are skyrocketing. So and this is one study following 80 polar bear cubs born between 2004 to 2007 of the 80 cubs in this study, how many do you think are alive today? Born between 2004 and 2007, how about two of them? 78 of the 80 baby polar bears are no longer with us. So things are not looking good for, uh, for baby polar bears in the Arctic, but let's go down there to Australia for some good news here. For Let's look at some baby flying foxes. Hundreds of baby flying foxes are rescued after a heat wave in Australia. <clears throat> this week's scorching heat in New South Wales, Australia has already killed an estimated 5,000 flying fox bats and injured about 400 babies that are now recovering at record centers, at rescue centers. Temperatures soared to 111 degrees Fahrenheit on Saturday, causing many flying foxes to drop dead from trees. Authorities have been cleaning up the grizzly pileup ever since. And uh, as the flying foxes keep native forests healthy by pollinating and dispersing seeds. I talked about this on Friday and I love this at the bottom of the story. <clears throat> Uh, talking about our esteemed, uh, well, Australia's esteemed Prime Minister, that planet eater, Tony Abbott. The, the die-off happened just days after Australia hosted the Group of 20 Leaders Summit in Brisbane, where Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott said, quote, we cannot pursue environmental improvements at the expense of economic progress. There you go. That once my, I, I'm ending up quoting Tony Abbott in how many of my rants recently. Uh, th there you go. That is the G20 logic in a nutshell. 
we cannot pursue environmental improvements at the expense of economic progress which brings me to the final story here from AP News looking at China you know China talking about how they are going to save the planet the biggest uh, polluter on the planet bar none we see this headline China's energy plan reduces reliance on coal reduces reliance on coal. that seems to me guys that reducing is is below zero so you read the story and the definition the mainstream me me media definition of reducing is in fact an increase an increase of coal use in China by 16 percent between now and 2030 that is a strange definition of reducing by increasing something 16 percent but this is the mainstream media definition of reducing and I will close obviously with this I I anybody who believes for one second one second that China's energy plan reduces reliance on coal there's just one thing to say to that clueless moron warning warning bullshit alert anywho guys I'm jacked up on coffee and we got a long ride ahead of us today and I gotta go hop in the shower and use up some more fossil fuels before we get back in our gas sucking truck pulling our what are we pulling a 1947 Chevy it's been sucking gas for God since, since long before I was born 67 years of pumping uh, well I hadn't pumped any uh, fossil fuels into the air in the past few years anyway I gotta get out of here guys bye guys